Good evening, and welcome to Doves for Peace this Thursday evening. And it's good to be back with you after a long time away from Doves for Peace. And this evening will hopefully introduce you to an amazing book called Care for Creation, A Franciscan Spirituality of the Earth. And it's been written by three really inspirational authors, two of whom are Franciscans. But let us read what Richard Rohr has to say about this book. He says, if we are blowing our Franciscan horn here, it should have been blown much earlier and much louder. This is the wisdom that our world so desires and needs today. <clears throat> he says, we can no longer see ourselves as separate from the great chain of being, and we can no longer see this as a non-religious issue. Francis intuited all of this 800 years ago. And Brother William J. Short, also a Franciscan, says, the authors combine good science with solid theology and practical applications, displaying the genius of Franciscan tradition in lively dialogue with today's environmental crises. A profound theology from our medieval Catholic heritage that can help put our sister Mother Earth at the forefront of religious concern in the 21st century. An excellent tool for churches, schools and study groups concerned about expressing Christian faith through right relationship with God's creation. And John F. Nott, a senior fellow of science and religion at Woodstock Theological Center in America says, in this thoughtful and inspiring book, the authors provide a great service to the earth and all its inhabitants. They show how a contemporary Franciscan spirituality of creation, following the footprints of Jesus, with the guidance of St. Francis of Assisi, can help renew the face of the earth in our own time. I have read two thirds of the book and I must be honest, it is quite thought provoking. It was a little heavy in places, but the essence of the book certainly reawakens within you a desire to reflect on how we deal with the earth, how we work alongside Mother Earth. Thomas Berry says the human community and the natural world will go into the future as a single sacred community or we will both perish in the desert. And the foreword is quite interesting in the book, for it says, Earth with all its creatures is in crises, and responding to this crisis will require every possible resource of our human community. One of the most precious of these resources is the Franciscan tradition. But why the Franciscan? and not say the Benedictine or the Dominican or the Ignatian. And I guess it's because Franciscan spirituality is rooted, is rooted in the Cathedral of God, the landscape. And we've no better person than Francis himself, for he was a truly inspirational teacher. He loved the earth, he respected the earth. 
Brother Sun, Sister Moon, and Sister Earth are all terms that he used, and even the animals knew him because they felt safe with him, because they knew he loved them. But here we read, it is a joy to welcome this book as a wise, thoughtful, inspiring, and a practical contribution to ecological theology, grounded in the ancient Christian tradition that sees the earth as our sister and our mother. Care for creation is part of a wider retrieval of Franciscan theology for our new time. But it is unique in its blend of three interrelated disciplines, scientifically informed ecology, theology, and the practice of reflective action. Reading this manuscript led me to reflect on how my own theological journey has been informed and shaped by the tradition of Francis and Claire of Assisi. It is not only that Francis has been my companion, with his image hanging over my desk for many years as I have worked on e ecological theology, it is also three fundamental lines of thought that have shaped my own thinking that have sprung from this Franciscan tradition. The first is the kinship of creation, the theological insight that we, all of God's creation, are all fellow creatures, each uniquely loved and valued by God. This means, of course, that we cannot treat any of our fellow creatures as if they exist without value. In spite of all the distinctions between us, we are family. Yes, the animal kingdom and we humans are all family. We are all connected. We are all loved by the same God. And that instills within me the love for the animal kingdom and to treat the animal kingdom with dignity and respect as God's little helpers and providers. And you'll find wherever you go in the world, anyone who is a follower of Francis is also a lover of nature and the animal kingdom. In fact, most of our community are pet lovers. We all have rescued animals that have been abandoned or may be left, and we have cared for them and loved them as we would our own child. So there's a resonance with our pets, and they trust us. He says here, this means, of course, that we cannot treat any of our fellow creatures as if they exist without value. In spite of all the distinctions between us, we are family. And I've read that again because it's important. In my view, both the kinship and the call to till and keep creation, as mentioned in Genesis chapter 2, verse 15, are fundamental in locating the human vocation within the wider creation before God. But the heart of ecological conversion is the invitation to see, feel, and act in this kinship of creation. A second insight from the Franciscan tradition was mediated to me long ago through the work of the great Jesuit theologian, Carl Rayner. Dennis Edwards says, Rayner follows the Franciscan theologian, John Dunn Scotus, in holding that God creates a universe of creatures with the incarnation in mind. 
the incarnation does not come about simply as a result of sin. It is not a second remedial step, although it certainly brings forgiveness. God always intended to give God's self to us in the incarnation and take us to God's self in the final consummation of all things. God's one act of self-bestowal has the distinct dimensions of creation and incarnation. In my experience of teaching, he says, I have discovered that most Christians do not have access to this theological position and feel relief and joy in discovering it. And as this book makes clear, this insight from Scotus, along with other Franciscan thinkers, provides the basis for linking ecology and Christianity at a radical level. The third great learning for me occurred about 16 years ago while I was on study leave at the Centre for Theology and Natural Sciences at Berkeley, as well as learning about science and theology I found myself spending months reading Bonaventure and discovering in his Trinitarian theology abundant resources for an ecological theology that takes Christology, study of Christ, and the Trinity as central. For Bonaventure, ecstasy and fecundity are located at the heart of the Trinity, the three persons in one. The dynamic goodness of the fountain fullness, the fontalis plenitudo, finds expression in the eternal wisdom and word, the exemplar, and reaches its loving culmination in the spirit. With the free choice to create what this Trinitarian dynamism comes to is fruitful expression in an interrelated world of diverse creatures. For every creature is a work of art of the Trinity. Every organism, every species, every ecosystem is the self-expression of the dynamic Trinitarian life, a sign of the divine presence. The biotic community of a rainforest, a wetland or a household garden is the work of art of divine wisdom. These three insights are dealt with in rich detail in the pages that follow, along with a great deal more, and the whole contributes beautifully to the theory and the practice of ecological conversion. At the heart of this book is a profound conviction that responding to the Incarnation, the Word made flesh commits us to the interrelated world of flesh, to the biological community of Earth. Resisting ecological conversion is, theologically, resistance to the Incarnation. To be truly ecologically converted to Earth in a fully theological sense will involve a conversion to the Incarnation. We take a breather here and we just spend time for a moment just gathering our thoughts in this cathedral of God, the landscape, where all the children of God are welcome, all creeds, all colour, all lifestyle choices. We are all 
welcomed as a beloved community, as a family of God. And yet, within that family there is disquiet. And where there is disquiet and suffering, needless suffering, through acts of terrorism or mindful neglect, either towards self, another, or the animal kingdom, we have imbalance, we have disharmony, as evident from the recent massacre in Tunisia. Why is it that we behave in such an awful way, in an evil way, towards one another? What is it that motivates one to want to massacre innocent people? Is it religion? Is it fundamentalism? Or is it the thinking of someone that has lost the plot? But history, we only have to read history and we discover many tyrants, Mussolini, Stalin, many, many of them, Hitler, even in our own time, Saddam Hussein, all loved by God and yet they chose a different path to control and destroy. Let us read the Canticle of the Creatures, written by St. Francis as he was dying. Let us just come to our heart and hear what he has to say. Most high, all powerful, good Lord, yours are the praises, the glory, and the honor, and all blessings. To you alone, Most High, do they belong. And no human is worthy to mention your name. Praise be you, my Lord, with all your creatures, especially Sir Brother Son, who is the day and through whom you give us life. And he is beautiful and radiant with great splendor and bears a likeness of you most High One. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Moon and the stars. In heaven you form them clear and precious and beautiful. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Wind and through the air, cloudy and serene, and every kind of weather through whom you give sustenance to your preachers. Praise be you, my Lord, through Sister Water, who is very useful and humble and precious and chaste. Praise be you, my Lord, through Brother Fire, through whom you light the night. And he is beautiful and playful and robust and strong. Praise be you, my Lord, through our Sister Mother Earth, who sustains and governs us and who produces various fruit with colored flowers and herbs. Praise be you, my Lord, through those who give pardon for your love and bear infirmity and tribulation. Blessed are those who endure in peace, for by you most high they shall be crowned. Praise be you, my Lord, through our sister bodily death, from whom no one living can escape. Woe to those who die in mortal sin. Blessed are those whom death will find in your most holy will, for the second death shall do them no harm. Praise and bless my Lord and give him thanks and serve him with great humility. And there you have it. 
the canticle of the preachers. What was that saying to you? What were you sensing in your heart? Let us be still. Let us be still in this cathedral of God. And let us invite, invoke, and call upon the Spirit to speak to us in how we can become more ecologically aware as ambassadors of peace. And how we can bring the love of Mother Earth and all its creatures to the world. So for a moment, let us just relax in this sacred oasis, a temple of love. Feel the earth under your feet. Allow your feet embrace the currents of energy flowing across the landscape. A healing energy that allows plants and vegetables to grow. Just sense the gentle flow of energy from earth right up your feet. And that energy allows you to experience balance, harmony, as it flows up through each of your chakras, allowing you to sense the rhythmic flow of love of the divine. Be still. Be still and be aware. that as a child of God, you are loved. But as a child of God, you are called like Francis, like Jesus, like all the great prophets, to leave energetic footprints of love, of respect, unity and peace. And where fundamentalism, bigotry, hatred are not part of your being on us. But that you are an ambassador of light, an ambassador of love. So be still now. And with every in-breath that you breathe, you are breathing in the very breath of God. Now sense the peace of God. And now let that peace touch you. Just relax. And be aware of your surroundings. the nature spirits are bringing to you love. They show you respect and all they ask in return is that you will treat this sacred earth with the same respect and dignity And that as an ambassador of peace, you will become that peace. 
So just allow Mother Earth to welcome you on this new journey where together we will rediscover care for creation a Franciscan spirituality of the earth. Thank you for joining me. And I look forward to your company again very soon, where I will share with you some of the beautiful treasures written in this amazing little book. Thank you for being here.